Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve this problem right here in real time. But the point of this video is not just to have you watch me uh, solve this one specific problem, but uh, really what I wanna do is give you kind of an insight into my thinking when I see a problem like this in algebra, what comes to mind? I'm like, okay, what type of problem is this? What are the kind of methods and techniques do I need to use in order to solve a problem like this? So this is really going to be the main value of this video. But if you know how to solve this problem, and let me go ahead and read the problem here. Uh, we have y is less than 2 thirds x plus 1. We want to answer this question. We want the solution to this problem. And if you know how to do this problem, well, put your answer into the comment section. Now, the solution to this problem, uh, you really can't put into the comment section, and I'll explain why here in a second. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. But uh, if you stick with me for a few minutes, you're going to learn a lot about something that's very important in algebra, and that is dealing with inequalities, okay? And this is different than dealing with equations. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I said that we can't put the answer to this uh, uh, inequality, right? This is what we're dealing with here. Uh, this is a less than situation. We can't put this into uh, the comment section because the correct answer is a graph. Okay, now maybe one day on YouTube you could actually put a graph. That would be pretty awesome. But uh, if you said, hey, we have this graph, and uh, you know, if you describe the graph, then that's fantastic. Okay, so what we have here is a line. And let's notice this line here. This line is a dotted line. It's dashed, okay? It's not a solid line, and that's done for a very specific reason. And uh, beneath the line, this is shaded down like so. All right, now if you're, say, uh, if you're saying to yourself, yes, indeed, I did this problem, and this is what I came up with, well, then it appears to me that you did this problem right. So we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving two variables, two variable linear inequalities. Okay, this is the best kind of uh, description of this. You can see we're dealing with two variables, y and x, and uh, these are to, uh, to the first power. So this would be what we call linear, and we're dealing with an inequality. Okay, so two variable. Linear inequality, very, very important topic in algebra. And uh, some of you out there might be saying, I have no idea why the answer is some sort of graph. Well, don't despair. In a couple minutes, you'll be an expert as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. And as I indicated, I want to uh, you know, give you an insight to what I would be thinking. Now, I see a problem like this, and in algebra, you're saying to yourself, all right, what am I dealing with, okay? Well, what uh, my eyes are drawn to is this right here, okay? This is an inequality symbol. It's not an equation, okay? So this right here, this is an equation. And uh, when you have a problem like this, I have y and x, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, y and x, uh, is this a y equals mx plus b? Well, this is right here. This is a linear equation, okay? So like... Uh, it's in matter of fact, it's in the form y equals. Now, of course, I changed the problem. I'll change it back in a second. But this is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so this thing right here, as I um, have it written with the equal sign, is something called a linear. Okay, a linear equation. Linear equation. So what does that mean? Well, this. Look at the root word here. It's line. This is an equation of a line. In other words, I can actually graph a line on an xy plane. So that's what this is right here. And this particular equation, y equals uh, 2 thirds x plus 1, happens to be in what we call a slope intercept form, which is the most common form of linear equations. Now, there are other forms as well, but uh, typically we like to write our equations, uh, linear equations, in y equals mx plus b or slope intercept 
form. Now, if you've never uh, seen this before, you might be, um, you know, you may not have learned enough algebra yet, but if you are, you know, taking algebra, this is like absolute must-know stuff. Now, a couple quick suggestions uh, for those of you who are like, ah, I mean, I'm already a little bit lost and you're going to want some follow-on instruction, check out my algebra courses. You'll find links to them in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. All right, so right here, this is a linear equation, and it's in the form of y equals mx plus b, and this is pretty easy to actually graph. All right, so, but the problem is not a linear equation, right? So what is the problem? Well, the problem is this thing right here. So this is an inequality. This is a different deal, okay? So inequalities are less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And let's take a look at a real basic inequality problem here. Let's, let's say I had x is less than 4. x is less than 4. So what is the solution to this inequality? Okay. So, you know, I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm asking you a serious question. What is the solution to this inequality? So you might be uh, saying to yourself, hmm, come on, Mr. YouTube math man. Uh, you know, any number less than four, right? So maybe like three. Okay, well, yeah, you got me convinced so far. Three is less than four, that's good. But there's other numbers, right? Like two is less than four, that works as well. Uh, how about zero? Zero is less than four. Here's the problem, okay? If I try to list out all the individual solutions uh, to this inequality, well, it would take me an infinite amount of time. And both you and I don't have that amount of time to list out the solutions. So what we want to do is we like to use graphs to represent the solution. Okay, so for example, here, I can just draw a little number line here. I could put four on my number line, and then I would have an open circle like this. I'll explain that in one second, and then I'll have a little arrow like this. Okay, this is a graph. Now, graphs are great to represent the solution to inequalities because what we're saying here is every single infinite number that's less than four is a solution to this inequality. And I can graphically, graphically see that by, on a number line. Okay, all these numbers here, this would be zero, for example, here's negative one. All these numbers, all the way to negative infinity, are solutions to this uh, inequality, okay? Now, the reason why I have an open circle, uh, now there's different notations as well. Uh, there's open and closed circles. And again, if you're like a little bit lost here, uh, it just means that you need to study uh, inequalities a little bit uh, more in depth. No big deal. It's not that difficult. But uh, anyways, what this means is that uh, four is not a solution. All the numbers are less than four. So for example, 3.9999999, this is a solution. Okay, so I can get super close to four, but four itself is not a solution because four is not less than four. Now, if this was equal to, in other words, if this is four or less than or equal to four, then I would close this circle. And that would indicate that four is also um, a solution to the inequality because this means four, any number that is less than or equal to four. Okay, so again, uh, big distinctions between inequalities and uh, equations. Okay, so in uh, equations, and I'm uh, just going to be uh, speaking some real general terms here. When you have equations, generally speaking, uh, there are very specific finite number of solutions, like x is equal to 5, or x is equal to 2 and negative 3. We're talking inequalities. Well, there are infinite many solutions, so we like to use graphs and the like. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing right here in this problem. Okay. So uh, first things first, again, you're like, all right, I'm dealing with the inequality problem. Now, how to how do I um, approach this? Okay, so what we're going to have to do here, okay, to solve a two-variable linear, linear inequality is think of this as a line, okay? Think of this as a linear equation because we're going to want to graph a line, but not just any line. What we have to do is pay attention to the inequality symbol, okay? All right, so if you have a less than or greater than type of problem, when you go to graph your line, you're not going to just graph a straight line. You're going to graph a dotted line, okay? A dotted line, and I'll tell you why in a second. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to situation, then you just uh, graph a solid line like so, okay? 
But in either uh, circumstances here, you're going to have to know how to graph linear equations. Again, a very important core skill. So I'm just going to quickly uh, sketch out a uh, xy plane right here, being as neat as I can. And we'll go through the steps for this problem. But if uh, you don't know what I'm doing, then again, you just have to learn this stuff. It's nothing that's uh, beyond your ability to learn. But you know, I'm going to be highlighting the skills that you need to solve this specific problem. All right. So the first thing is, let's just think in our, our minds here for a second that this is the problem. Okay, y equals two thirds x plus one, and we want to graph this line. All right, so this line, this linear equation, is in y equals mx plus b form. So the b is the y-intercept, okay? So you can see here, one is our y-intercept. So we're gonna go to uh, one on the y-axis, and I'll put that like right here. Okay, so there's one on the y-axis. I'm just sketching this out. Now, that's one point that's on this line, okay? Now I need to find the second point, or a second point, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so how can I find a second point? Well, we have to use the slope. So the slope m is two over three. Now this two is the rise and this three is the run. Okay, so we're gonna start from this y-intercept and we're gonna go up two. Okay, we're gonna go up two and we're gonna go over to the right three. Okay, this is how you use the slope to find a second point that's on the line. So from one, I'm gonna go up to two, one, two, and then to the uh, right, three, one, two, three. Now this should be review for all of you out there that are again, taking set any sort of algebra course, but uh, you know, I'm not going to assume that you remember all of this, but this is just real basic 101, how to graph linear equations. Okay, so right now I'm all excited. I got two points that are on this line, but uh, now I am going to uh, get ready to actually graph my line, right? But remember, I'm dealing with a less than situation so instead of drawing a subtle line through here, I'm going to um, draw a uh, dotted line, okay? A line with dashes. So I'm gonna do my best here uh, to actually do this. And let me get a little kind of ruler here. And uh, if you're actually doing this in some sort of algebra course, you wanna do it just like this. Kind of just do a little nice, you know, the neater you are, the better your teacher, and you will appreciate that work. Okay, so this is a line. So there you go. Now I'll explain to you in a second here why it's uh, dashed and not solid. All right, so we successfully uh, have our uh, linear equation on our graph. We uh, were able to do that. So now here is the uh, next part. What is the solution to this inequality? Well, just like uh, when we had like a regular number line uh, and we have an arrow that indicates all these uh, values, when we have a two variable linear inequality, what the solution is going to be uh, one side of the graph. So one side of the graph here, okay, or this line, excuse me, one side is going to be the true part, okay, uh, the true region, which would be the solution, and one side will be the false region, okay? So all we have to do is just test one side. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means any point, any x, y order pair location point on uh, one side of this line uh, will satisfy this inequality. It will be, it will make it true, okay? That is the solution region. That would be the solution to this uh, two variable inequality. But one side is gonna be true and by default, the other side will be false, okay? So how can we test this or how, do, how can we determine? This is actually very easy. The best way to do this is if you have a line, a linear equation that's not running through the origin right here, this point is zero, zero. And if you notice, it's under our line. It's underneath our line. So let's test this um, region right underneath the line and let's determine whether it is a true or false region, okay? Now, if it turns out to be false, then that means the other side is true. If it's true, well, then that is the solution region. So how do I do that? Well, remember this point here, zero, zero, this is an X, Y ordered pair x is zero and y is zero. So we're just gonna plug in zero for x and zero for y into our inequality. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, let me use some colors here. So uh, I'm gonna plug in zero right here. And uh, let me see, I don't wanna, uh, here, this is better. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in uh, zero, zero. Okay, again, this is gonna be x for uh, 
uh, x is going to be 0 and y is going to be 0. So right here for this y, I'm going to have 0. So that's going to be 0 is less than uh, 2 thirds times 0, OK, because x is going to be 0, uh, plus 1. All right, so what is uh, you know going on here? Well, 2 thirds times 0 is 0. So all this really is 0 is less than 1. OK, so 0 is less than 1 because 2 thirds times 0 is 0. So we're really looking at zero, is, is 0 less than 1? OK, is 0 less than 1? Is that true or is that false? Is 0 less than 1? Yes, indeed, that is true. OK, so we tested this point down here in the origin and it turned out to be true. So what we want to do is shade this region. This is the solution region. This is the solution to this two variable inequality. OK, so I did promise that I was going to explain the whole idea behind these dashed lines and solid lines. So the idea here is if you have a point that is on this line here, OK, the actual linear equation, y equals 2 thirds x plus 1, for this particular problem, because this is less than, a point that's on the line is not, OK, this is not a part of the solution, OK, it's not a solution. All right, so that's the main idea. So the dashed line, this border, means that points that are on that line are in fact not part of the solution set, only the points underneath this line. So any point over here, okay, would satisfy the solution. Let's, uh, let's test something that's pretty obvious uh, about the point negative one, negative one. Okay, negative one, negative one is like right over here, right? Let's plug in negative one, negative one into this inequality just to make sure that you understand that this in fact is correct. So if I have a negative one here for y, right? This is the point negative one, negative one. So there's a negative one for y. And then we have two thirds times uh, negative one right here, okay, uh, plus one. So this is gonna be, is negative one less than uh, two thirds times negative one plus one? So uh, my kind of room is getting a little bit messy. I'll kind of go up this way here. So let's just check this math here real quick, OK? All right, so 2 thirds times negative 1, that's going to be negative 2 thirds plus 1, OK? So that's 1 over 1. So that would be negative 2 thirds plus 3 over 3, right? So we're kind of just doing this on the fly. So we have uh, this is going to be 1 third. OK, so when I did all this math here, that's a positive one third. So is negative one, all right, is that less than a positive one third? Yes, that is true. OK, so that is true. So all we did was just a spot check of a point down here, negative one, negative one, because that point is in the solution region. All right, so I think I gave you a pretty good overview of what is required to solve a two variable linear inequality and the various skills involved, right? You gotta know how to uh, graph lines. You need to really uh, master linear equations, slope, and all this kind of good stuff. So if you're a little bit overwhelmed, don't be, okay? What you wanna do is just say, all right, you know, make yourself a math shopping list. Uh, what do I know and what don't I know? I'm like, okay, I need to pick up uh, some slope skills. I need to pick up how to uh, graph linear equations better, da, 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 da. And you just get yourself a shopping list and you go start working on those skills, okay? That's why it's so important for you to show your work step by step because your teacher or somebody else looking at your work can be like, oh, you understand this and this and this, but clearly you need to work on that. All right, so hopefully this video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.